Okay, so this is the the instruction for you because when you close your eyes, it's totally another thing because you're going to deal with the abstract. But look at the story, okay, surrounding this whole thing first. Try to understand. So I will stop like this. We have the physical self and then we have the mental self, our consciousness. Our consciousness is a knowing nature, okay? So physical self and the mental self. Okay, your physical self got the physical eyes. Eyes are for viewing. Your mental self also got the mental eye. Okay, also got the mental eye. Physical self will view the scenery outwardly. Oh, those flowers are so beautiful. The sky is blue, this and that. But our mental self, we use it to view our inner scenery. Okay, the concept of the mental eye. We got the physical self with the mental physical eyes. Our mental self also got the mental eye. This mental eye, sometimes we call the third eye, the inner eye, the sixth sense is all the same. And this concept is so ancient. It's so ancient since the the Brahm, you know, called the Brahm, uh, Brahm, Brahman, isn't it? Okay, Hindu, you know, very ancient, even before before Buddhism. Okay. People talking about the third eye a long time ago, a long time ago, okay? So what is the third eye for? The third eye is for us to view our inner scenery, to view our inner scenery. So later on, you're going to close your physical eyes down and then open your third eye. I will guide you when you sit down. I will still guide you. So your third eye will be look inwardly you look inwardly look at what look at what okay we come back to this there are three groups of scenery that you got to look at with your third eye okay the first group is your breath it's your breath the second group is the rhythm of your movement so I'm going to ask you to, you know, stroke your legs, go around your knees, all these things. You're going to uh, look at the rhythm. You don't have to open your eyes to look because the scenery of knowing your breath and the scenery of knowing the movement, they are different, totally different group of scenery. They are different. So, okay, you can distinguish them quite naturally. And then the third group of scenery are your sensation, your physical sensation. So these are the anchor, the anchor, okay? The anchor that will pin your mental self down, okay? Why do we need the anchor? Because naturally, your mental self likes to go to Jerry, okay? Your mental self also, because there is no anchor. If you never learn about meditation, there is no anchor for you. So all your Jerry is all go to this and that, this and that, this and that all the time. And then you end up, oh, I'm so stressed. I'm so sad, all these things, okay? And then problem come. So this is something new now. You're going to learn a new, a new tool that help you pick up all this, you know, chain and then anchor it down to the foundation of mindfulness. And that anchor are three groups. Your breath, your movements, your physical sensation. Now regarding the physical sensation, I'm going to ask you to tap yourself, okay? Just to bring out the really, you know, strong sensation to make a good and excellent anchor, okay? You'll find out later on. So as you're anchoring your mental eyes to these three foundations, okay? There are uh, some golden rule that you need to follow. 
The golden rule is that do not engage in any kind of jerry. If there is jerry come in, suppose this is jerry. Okay, I've lost my well, this is Jerry. Come in and distract you. Distract your mental eye, okay? And want to take you back, you know, to Jerry. Think, think, think. You must be aware and do not engage with Jerry, no matter what. So don't engage. Don't compromise with Jerry. Jerry might come in and say that, Oh, no, 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 this is important. I must tackle this. I must think of this, you know. Don't compromise with Jerry, no matter how important it is, okay? And don't entertain Jerry. What you need to do is to cut the cord. Cut the cord. So what happened is that between Tom and Jerry, Tom is your mental self, between Tom and Jerry, this umbilical cord have never been cut, have never been severed, okay? That's why you never have any independence. You imagine the baby, if the baby never cut the cord from mommy, the baby will just hanging along all the time, and there's not life. And this works exactly the same as Tom and Jerry. Your Jerry, connect with your mental self with this strong umbilical cord that you never, you know, sever it. And it's time to cut it off, okay? Otherwise, this Jerry will rub against you all the time and cause you the mental pain. So that's why the Buddha gave us these three sets of anchor your breath, your movement, and your sensations. So when you close your eyes, you do nothing but fully focus, fully focus on your breath, on your movements, on your physical sensation, okay? Regardless, okay? Don't engage, don't entertain, don't compromise, cut the cord. That's all you need to do. Just cut the cord. You've got to be decisive. You've got to be strong. Okay? You've got to determine. You've got to want to feel better. Because this kind of thing, no one can force upon anyone. I can't even force my husband my children to do this. <laughs> okay? <laughs> there is no need to force because when they're ready, they come. Mommy, please. Please teach me. I have so much pain. I wait for that day. Can be painful for mommy to watch because mommy teach people. Okay? But this is something that you must do in meditation. Is that clear? Is that clear? Because when you can do this, you're going to experience this. So, the first so this process is to reduce the population of Jerry. Reduce the population of Jerry. So this is like a road for Jerry to run in. So the traffic of Jerry is just so fast, in and out, in and out, all the time. Oh, exhausted. Okay, so when you come to, you know, bring your mental self back home, really anchor, cut the cord, cut the cord, follow the golden rule, you will the population of Jerry become, you know, uh, reduced. Once it reduces, you begin to see your mental space. You begin to see your mental space, okay? Experience the blissful state of mind, calm and peace. And then Jerry will still come in, but it will slow down quite drastically. It will slow down. However, if anyone sit in here, especially if you're new and your Jerry hasn't slowed down, I advise you to come back again tomorrow because, you know, just have, try to make the most of the time that you have with your teacher, you know, with the guidance here. And with group meditation, it can help you to see this mental space, you know, sooner than later. 
and it's much easier for you to do with your teacher than doing alone at home. Okay, you see later. So I will guide you all this, okay? So this mental space, bliss and calm, is very much like, you know, the stillness. This is the stillness in our mind. This is what we want. Okay, this is what you need to do, right? The mindfulness key practice is to tightly hold onto your pose. Your pose is your anchor, so this pose is your breath, movement, and sensation. Okay, so this man is your mental self. Is your mental self the storm? You know, feel hundred miles an hour is very much like Jerry is the boom, boom, boom. Can you see that? Can you see that without this pose, where is this man going to be? We're going to be up there, rolling everywhere, just like this. So what the Buddha did is that gave us this pole, this mental security, this mental security, the anchor for us to do. Okay, right, are you all ready? You're ready now, okay, right. Jay, can you flip that thing for me here, please? Thank you. Right. Anyone want toilet break before we go? Oh. We sit roughly, it will be about 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'll stop this. 40 minutes.